Hi guys, Lucy aka The Watchbugs Diaries here with another video for you. Now today I'm going to be talking about the Seiko SPB 151, which is an incredibly iconic Seiko amongst many, many watch enthusiasts. Not only does it have a really cool, unique case design, but it also has a pretty cool story too. Now the original 6105 was famously worn by a gentleman called Naomi Uemura back in 1978. He was the first person to travel to the North Pole completely solo. Epic achievement. However, that is probably not why a lot of you guys know this watch. Now this particular Seiko got its name, I guess it would have started off as a nickname, from the film Apocalypse Now, just you know, a small film, back in 1979. In this film, Martin Sheen played the now iconic Captain Benjamin Willard and he wore this during filming, hence the name. So during the Vietnam War, a lot of servicemen were issued with US branded watches such as Hamilton, but they were a little bit concerned about whether they could handle the terrain and the water within the tropics. So what they did is they either traded or saved up their money and bought different watches for themselves and ended up wearing them during service. One of which was the original Seiko 6105, hence why it was used within the film. There's a really cool article with a lot more detail in, in it. I will pop that down in the description below. You should read it because it's a pretty cool story. Now I really do think that this watch is everything a diver slash tourly watch should be. Unless you're a deep sea diver, 200 meters of water resistance should be pretty sufficient for everyday life activities. The dial itself is super clear and super legible thanks to those really big pips. It's pretty essential to the purpose of the watch really, so it's a good job. One of my pet hates is too much text on the dial. And although this does have some specifications on there, it is kept to the lower half of the dial and the rest of it is nice and clean. So it doesn't detract from actually being able to tell the time. Speaking of legibility, this watch has really good loom. I don't often need it, but I like to have it and I like to look at it and this is pretty good. The only thing I haven't quite worked out are why the pips slash loom plots at 12 o'clock are slightly angled at the bottom. If you have any idea why, please let me know. As a dive watch should, it has a unidirectional bezel with a pretty nice clicking sound. I know you guys like that kind of thing. It is a little bit on the tougher side to turn just because it's not quite as easy to grip as some other watches, but it's still fully functional and you can still turn it. Just make sure we get an aligned one. You guys have probably heard the phrase, that it wears so much smaller, a million times. But in this case, for this watch, it's so incredibly true. My wrist is just under 6.25 inches and a 42.7 mil watch, I probably would never go for. I think it would just hang over my wrist completely. But thanks to that gorgeous case shape, beautifully round, the lug to lug of the Seiko Willard is only 46.6 mil. And that is actually better than the 39 millimeter Rolex Explorer, which comes in at 48 millimeters. The Legend Diver is about 52. And the Tudor Black Bay comes in at just over 47 mil. So this watch actually wears smaller than all of those watches, making this an itty bitty wrist committee winner. Now you guys should know by now that I like things that are a little bit on the different side and the fact that this is a curved cushion case on a dive watch is pretty unusual and it just makes me love this watch even more. I also really appreciate the fact that the crown is at the four o'clock position and not the typical three o'clock. If and when the crown is at three o'clock, when you have that crown guard on the side, it can look really, really bulky. <coughs> Panerai. <laughs> But the fact that Seiko have managed to sort of melt the crown into the case, I just think is brilliant. It just adds such a very well blended aesthetic to the watch. I'm not sure why, but this version only comes on the bracelet and the SPB513, the green, only comes on a strap. If it had been an option, I would have just gone for the strap option because in true Seiko style, the bracelets aren't anything to write home about. It's pretty average. 
But thankfully, it is a really versatile watch. And you guys know I love matching my outfits to my watches, so I have had a lot of fun matching different straps with this piece. I do genuinely think this watch is just really cool. So if you're looking for a summer watch, if you're looking for a holiday watch, if you're looking for a watch that is strong and sturdy, but a little bit more on the unique side, then this watch is absolutely a solid choice for you. And that is it for me, people. Thank you very much for tuning in, as always. Let me know your thoughts on this watch, on Seiko, on the story, in the comments section below. I love hearing your guys' thoughts on these pieces that I review, so make sure you drop the comments down below. If you have enjoyed the content and you would like to support my channel, then make sure you have liked and subscribed. And if you would like to be notified of my upcoming videos, then make sure you have clicked the little bell and YouTube will do its thing. Until then though, bye. Why? Why? Why?